Now, exactly a week ago today, I took you to the hot springs of Sempaya in the Semiliki Valley. Today we remain in western Uganda, but this time we shall travel to a small village at Nyakasura in Kabarole district. And our center of interest will be Nyakasura Hill. From this vantage point, Fort Portal Town is at your feet with an awe-inspiring and breathtaking scenery before your eyes. A view of the crater lakes from above feels as though you are in a plane flying over. All this will be capped by the myths and the legends on how these crater lakes came to be. As we begin the journey to the top of the Nyakasura Hill, our guide prepares us for a long trek, saying it would take us about three hours to the summit. It was a sunny, bright morning when we set off to rediscover the crater lakes that are almost adjacent to the Mavera Ganyinamuro caves. Over 60 craters are spread all over Kabarole district, but a few are atop this hill. Like we had been told for the hours it would take, this was not to be an easy trek. We had to walk through several valleys and cross plains before finally embarking on the final climb up. The integrity of the serene and quiet environment is occasionally defiled by the sudden sound of wind sweeping across the valleys. Yeah, so, over here. so those are the lower ranges of mountain Ruenzoli. Okay. Yeah, so the higher ranges are on the south side towards Zikasese, Queen Elizabeth. And for us here, we are on the windward side of uh, this uh, mountain. So the opposite is uh, leeward side. So they receive uh, little rainfall or no rainfall throughout the year. So because of uh, dry winds. This is clear as we continue the climb. But not long before we advance, we come across a quicksand pond and we are told it's extremely dangerous for anyone if they set foot in there. In fact, we are told several years ago a man was sucked up by the quicksand and the legend is that he most probably died because he has never been seen again. But scary as the tale was, it did not dampen our spirits. Curiosity took the better of us, we just kept going. And shortly after, we found the first crater. It sits on a depression surrounded by trees. There is no fish here, but just a few wild ducks swimming without inhibitions. Deep waters don't allow aquatic life is fish. Because of the great depth, the sun cannot penetrate uh, deep water to supply what? oxygen to the plants to cut out photosynthesis. And now onto the final leg of our journey, which was the most hectic, and it starts right here. We had to go up over 1,000 feet above the ground to have a real feel and bird's eye view of one of the highest points in Fort Portal Town. It took us over two hours to finally get there. This is one of the highest points in Fort Portal. It's about 1,600 feet above the ground, and it's surrounded by three crater lakes. On the west side, are the lower ranges of the Mount Renzori. And from this vantage point, we could clearly not only take in the farthest point in the town, but also the rest of the craters dotted across the plains. Traditionally, residents here believe that each of these calderas was their ancestors' footprint, which was later filled up with water after heavy rains. Uh, we have this uh, lake Kigeri. So Kigeri in our local language means a foot. Means a foot. So it is believed that the people around believe that uh, uh, someone stepped here. And then that whatever would step there would remain a depression. He had supernatural powers. We attempted to believe this theory on our way down the hills after finding what seemed like a footmark on the rocks. Though it looks too large for an ordinary footprint, residents believe that whoever stepped on the rocks and left this mark had supernatural powers. In addition to this footprint are others, including an animal's paw prints, but nobody here can speak certainly about it. There is no clear explanation for these historical print marks, but the locals believe that one of their kings of ages ago could have been moving with his dog, which also stepped here. However, in geographical terms, craters were formed after intense pressure from within the rocks pushed hot magma out, forming huge hollows. So sometimes a hard gap is left beneath thousands of meters below. 
and it is believed this will be the easy points for the next eruption if it is to take place. So that again applies to the Congo, uh, to the Rift Valley this basin. And after slightly more than three hours of toiling, heading up Nyakasura Hill and totally worn out, it was worth the effort and one would be tempted to over the tortuous excursion again and again. It's very memorable. Like we have seen, as to whether the historical myths exposed by the locals explaining the footprints on the Nyakasura Hill are true or whether the formations can be explained geologically is an argument that can go on and on. But the people of Nyakasura will live to tell stories about their ancestors, keep it in the lore and obviously be proud of their past. One thing for sure is that the beautiful scenery will put Nyakasura Hill and Kawarole District among Uganda's top tourist destinations. I'm Isabel Nakiria for NTV Connect. Thank you.